I really want to talk to you about intellectual property because, of course, aside from leading uh, the Sada Group, you you are a global expert in this field of IP. And of course, when we talk about expansion across borders, when we think about things like trademarks, copyright, products and services, it's so important not only that we keep protecting those in mind, but that we also be mindful of the fact that rules and laws across borders can differ. So I just wondered, um, first of all, um, how can um, businesses considering expansion, either to the Middle East or anywhere in the world, um, what are the what are the main uh, things people need and businesses need to bear in mind to protect their IP? Well, practically, the Arab world is part of the international uh, community. And as you may know, we have the World Intellectual Property Organization, which is really doing a lot of work to harmonize IP uh, protection in the world. So uh, mainly all the Arabic uh, countries are part of the, the WIPO treaties. Uh, when it comes to the cultural part, maybe we need to work on much more awareness. But if we see across the Middle East, we're seeing a lot of NGOs like the EPA, the Emirate, uh, Emirates Intellectual Property Association, the Brand Protection Group Lebanon, which was established in 2002, which I preside ca uh, currently, the uh, Brand Protection Group uh, UAE, the AIPPI, uh, 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 PPI, and I don't want to just give you names. So we have a lot of work being done uh, when it comes to awareness, definitely uh, in the Arab world, IP is kind of a new thing, except in Lebanon, where we will be celebrating next year 100 years of intellectual property. So our first intellectual property law was being done uh, during the French mandate uh, mandat, so practically in 1924. This is why when it comes to intellectual property in Lebanon, you see uh, court decisions which are really uh, at a very high standards. Uh, now, across the Middle East, we have two, three systems. We're seeing how Saudi Arabia, they established the, uh, the Saudi Arabia IP authority, which is one of, uh, currently they are trying to become one of the uh, leading authorities uh, in intellectual property by all means in, in the region. And I think that the gentlemen and the ladies are doing a lot of uh, great work. So practically, when it comes to intellectual property, intellectual property laws are there. Uh, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's not the jungle part of the world. No, we have our laws. But in practice, definitely, uh, you know that when it comes to practice, uh, Maybe, maybe it's we don't have sufficient IP. Uh, I would say, uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe in the practice part, IP is not as protected as it slows because you know you have the economic part, you have a lot of politics, etc., and IP and economy. When, when you're a receiver in a country, because if you're talking about the German automobile or the UK total beverage uh, industry, definitely all the government is behind such industries. But when you are a receiver, practically you will have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, challenges uh, to do. I don't know if I explained my no, you did. myself right. We can we can we can really, No, no, uh, it was it, it, I was absolutely clear on it. It, it. It's the balance, isn't it, between um if if you think about intellectual property protection is never straightforward and certainly what you've described there is some of the detail in in the Middle East so it's really helpful. Just I mean we we live in a time now of um, unrivaled innovation um, in terms oh, yeah. of emerging technology, artificial intelligence. I always think of innovation as having been globalized, um, I guess now some years ago, but the pace of that 
innovation globalization seems to be increasing day after day. In terms of your experience as an intellectual property expert, um, what are some of the key principles that innovators need to bear in mind when considering how they protect their IP? Okay. First of all, we have to agree all that ideas are not protected. So if I give you, if I disclose an idea to you now and anyone executes it, definitely I cannot uh, sue him or her. So practically, this is one of the things that people always consider that I'm protecting my idea. It's the execution of ideas which is really protected. This is one. Second, I always say that people should have an IP strategy. And there, if we're talking about multinationals, definitely they have the means to protect themselves. But if we're talking about a startup, and I deal with uh, a lot of startups practically, where people would come to me and tell me, I, I got a grant of, I got an investment of fifty to $100,000. I need to start protecting myself. I'm considering in my business plan to open in the US, in the UK, in China, Dubai, KSA, etc. And then I need a plan to protect myself in all those. This is my brand. This is my trademark. So please, uh, attorney, find a way to protect me. And then this is what I always tell them. When it comes to startups, the vehicle should not be in front of the horses. Mainly a startup should invest in what the gentlemen or the ladies do best. So practically, they have to invest in their idea. Now, protecting it, uh, I would always start with copyright because uh, for people who know about copyright, copyright, it's uh, practically any execution of an idea is protected. Uh, as soon as we can uh, provide proofs that we have created it. So it's not like a trademark, we need to register it. Practically, I always tell people that you need to prove that. So the best thing is to go to the post, put whatever scenario you have, whatever source code you have, and you send it to yourself. So you get a, uh, a date on it, and then you leave it in the safe. And whenever you want, because there is a conflict of interest in between disclosing an idea and developing it and protecting it. If I'm going to the ministry to register a copyright, practically I'm disclosing it. So if I'm a film writer and I really do not want to disclose the whole idea because I didn't finish the script I'm working in, practically I start protecting it without disclosing it through the post by sending myself a mail and then definitely I won't go into the digital, uh, the emails, etc. I'm, I'm talking about a very simple, traditional idea to protect ourselves. And then I can develop my idea so that I can create a history for the idea. So if I'm disclosing it one day, I can tell the judge or the arbitrator or anyone well, that this is how my idea uh, uh uh, went to life. Uh, this is this is one. So the IP strategy is very important. Going back to that, and the IP strategy should go in pair with our business strategy. So practically, if I invented something in Lebanon and I really need to expand it to uh, uh, to the Arab region, I cannot go and register it in all the Arab countries. Because you have to know that uh, in the Arab world, the fees to register trademarks, for example, are excessively higher than other parts of the world. And this is why, as uh, you know, IP, IP fans, we're always talking about the regulators, that if we really need to uh, boost the, in, uh, the innovation, we have to consider the IP fees that we're paying to register trademarks and the like in, in, uh, in the region.